This is a painting intended to teach. This is a, a lesson painting. In this painting, I wanted to show you very specific things. I wanted to show you how the basic forms are created by very specific value shapes. The circle is created by this crescent of shadow and this little oval of light. This whole area is an oval of light. This little spot here is an oval of light. The cube is created by very subtle blends. Lighter here, dark, or I'm sorry, lighter here, uh, darker here, lighter up in here, darker over here, darker here, and lighter here, so that we create a relationship of contrast, a strong contrast between our light and our dark here, and this enables the object to come forward. On a cylindrical shape, we wanted to create stripes. So here we have stripes, of parallel line, parallel uh, values. <coughs> Uh, on the cone, the carrot is a cone, we have triangular lights and darks. A concave shape, the darkest dark here, creates the illusion that this object is concave. Uh, this reflected light out here creates the illusion that this is a object that is convex, it has reflected light. These are the points I wanted to make about the value uh, shapes in regard to the basic forms. Additionally, I wanted to show you how to create colors. I'm using only the, the colors out of the spectrum. I have created all the colors I needed to paint this painting, and you saw how I mixed them. I started out with the color that it was, whatever color it was, I started with that, and then I, I changed its value, lighter or darker, and then I changed uh, its intensity by adding the complement of that particular color. Shadows tend to have the complements of the color added to them. Uh, also, we showed you how uh, intensity of the color in the foreground here, this green down here is a much brighter green than the green back in here. And we started back uh, with a blend from a very intense color to a more muted color. This color back in here has more of its complement added to it. These are the points I want you to remember with this lesson, and I want you to carry this in all of your lessons and use these same principles for the rest of your paintings. And I hope that uh, you had a good time doing this. It was certainly fun for me. I had uh, a great time with this crew, and uh, we had a, a, a good time making this painting. I hope you make some more. Don't stop. Don't worry about mistakes. Mistakes are your best teachers. They're my best teachers, too. If you want your paintings to improve, try to do something new each time you do it. In every painting I do, every painting I've ever done, in fact, I have tried to do something that I didn't know how to do. And as I solve that problem, I have more problems to solve later on, but at least I don't have to worry about that one. And after a while, you begin to get the idea that you can solve any of these problems, and in fact, that's the truth. You can solve all these problems, but you have to confront them. You have to get over them. You have to figure out what it is that makes them work, or what it is that you're doing that doesn't make them work. Once you figure that out, and once you understand that, you can solve that problem and move on to the next problem. We never run out of problems. You're going to constantly have problems, it's your ability to solve problems that's going to make you a better artist. I've been asked, why do I teach people how to paint? Well, uh, there are two reasons for that. Uh, the one, and most probably the most important, is that I learn more from my students than they learn from me. I have a student who's turned me on to different colors. One of the colors on my palette, the permanent rose, was purely the, re the result of a student saying that I found this color, it looks great, I think you'll like it, and I did. And now I've changed everything. I've thrown out the other colors, and I use that color from now on. Students teach me a great deal, and the other thing is that they keep me sharp. Sometimes I get a little loose and a little sloppy, and, and if I have students out there watching what I'm doing, I can't be as sloppy as I'm inclined to be. So they teach me things, and they keep me on the line. Now, you have an advantage over most of my students in that you have a little button on your tape machine that says, Rewind. So I want you to use that uh, button whenever you have a question about what I've just said. I often say things too fast or too confusing, and sometimes you have to rewind them. My students in the classroom don't always have this choice. I don't rewind too well in person, but you've got me on tape, and you can rewind as often as you want. I want you to wear that button out until you understand what's going on.